Hi, I'm Clay Roden, founder of Longshot Cameras. If you're seeing this video, it means you've already got our product. So I want to walk you through the basics of how to connect to the system and the features of the Longshot app. So to first connect to the system, turn your camera on and go into the Wi-Fi settings of your device. Then you'll see the name of the system appear in the Wi-Fi settings. If you've got an LR3 or Marksman, you'll see the prefix LR3 or Marks followed by a series of numbers, which is your unit number. If you've got the Hawk, you'll see the prefix Hawk and then its unique identification number. So once you see that pop up in your Wi-Fi settings, you can tap to connect to it. The password on all of our camera systems is Longshot, all lowercase. After you've connected and have a blue check mark next to the Wi-Fi name, then you can go into the app. Now, one thing you'll notice when connecting to the Wi-Fi is that you may get an error message or a warning message rather saying that there's no internet connection available. On iOS, uh, it's gonna say no internet connection. And on Android, you'll get a different prompt depending on what tablet or phone you have. Typically ask you if you wanna stay connected to the Wi-Fi network. And you wanna make sure to choose to stay connected. After you're connected, you can go to the Longshot app and the app will scan for a camera and find it. When it finds it, the camera icon on the uh, home page is going to be kind of colored in instead of the soft color that it started as. And you've got the option to either tap the uh, camera options and then choose camera one, or tap the play button in the bottom corner. Now you've got your feed pulled up on your tablet and you can start using the camera to shoot. You would also use this feed when you're downrange to aim the camera into the target. So once you're in the camera feed, you'll notice icons on the right hand side of the screen and a small icon in the bottom left corner. Uh, first of all, to return back to the home screen, there's a back button in the top left and you can just tap that to return to the dashboard. And then to return to the camera feed again, just push the play button. Uh, the button's on the right hand side. At the very top, you'll see the menu button. This is gonna bring up some additional features uh, and if you have multiple cameras, you'll be able to switch between those cameras here in this menu. The next icon down is gonna be our measurements feature, which will allow you to measure your group size and give you an adjustment to zero calculation live while you're shooting. Down below that is a, a quick guide, which initially pops up when you come into the camera feed for the first time. And so if you forget what some of these buttons do, uh, or what some of the features are, you can just jump into the menu and run down to the guide here to, to get a refresher on that. So the next button down is gonna be our blinker shot locator feature, which will help you to find your shot when the target becomes crowded with a lot of bullet holes. The way this works is it takes a snapshot of your target each time you press the button. When you press this button, it's gonna compare the old snapshot to the new snapshot. Now nothing changed when I pushed this the first time to when I just pushed it now. But if I move the camera just a little bit and then tap the button again, you'll see the difference flashing back and forth. So if you've got a new bullet hole or a new group of bullet holes, those will all flash so you can easily identify them. And once you find the bullet hole, you can zoom in and tap the screen. It'll stop the flashing and mark your shot. To adjust the settings of the blinker shot locator, you can tap and hold on the icon, and a menu appears at the bottom where you can adjust the blink frequency and the blink duration. Next is the button to take a snapshot or record video. So to take a snapshot, you just tap the button, you'll see a white flash to confirm that a snapshot was taken, and then to record video, you just wanna tap and hold, you'll get a prompt that the the app is gonna record your screen and your microphone. That's okay. We wanna press okay to that. And then you'll see that the orange button in the center of that icon has gotten larger to indicate that it's actively recording. To stop recording, simply tap the button. The next icon down is our undo button. So if you've got a lot of shot markers on the screen or you place the shot marker in the wrong location, you can tap that button once and it'll undo each shot marker one at a time. If you tap and hold the button, it'll erase all the shot markers on the screen. 
The use case for that would be if you uh, were just shooting a target and you replaced it with a fresh target, you could quickly erase all your shot markers and start fresh with a new target. Or if you're using a steel target and you've been marking your shots and you go down to repaint the target, then you could erase the shot markers as well. Down below that is going to be the settings for the actual shot markers themselves. If you tap on that, you get the shot marker settings menu to pop up. From here, you can change the color of the shot markers and you can also change the size of the shot markers. So I'll place a shot marker here to illustrate how that works. And so if you've got a large caliber or the camera's closer to the target, you'll probably be using one of the larger size shot markers. If you're further back from the target or shooting a small caliber, you'll likely be using our smallest size setting. As you're shooting, you can mark groups and mark each shot. This makes it easy to identify the new bullet holes because it's gonna be the one without a shot marker placed on it. After you've shot a group, or if you are shooting with multiple people, uh, you can mark each group or each shooter a different color. To do that, simply tap the shot marker icon and choose a new color. Now your new shot markers will be placed in the new color. And then if you've got a good group going and you can't really tell, maybe you put a, a shot in the same hole, you can tap and hold the icon to hide the shot markers and get a clearer picture of what's behind them. And then simply tap and hold again to bring them back onto the screen. That's the basics of the icons on the right hand side of the screen. And now moving on to the bottom left, we have our selfie view or shooter view feature. So if you tap this button, it's actually gonna use the rear facing camera on the tablet or phone to record you as you're shooting. You can use this uh, to capture videos or snapshots while you're shooting and share those to social media or show to your friends. You can also use this to uh, record yourself shooting and then go back and review the footage to check your fundamentals, make sure that you're holding the gun the same way or pulling the trigger the same way or that you're getting the same uh, cheek placement on the rifle each time you take a shot. This view will also be recorded if you're doing a screen recording. Uh, so you will be able to see yourself as a picture in picture next to the target as you're shooting. And same thing if you take a snapshot, it will also have the picture in picture placed there uh, as you take a snapshot as well. One thing to note about our shooter view feature, if you are using the measurements feature, the shooter view will not be available. Uh, that screen real estate is used to actually show the statistics on each group that you shoot. And so we can't display that there at the same time. That about covers it for the basic features and icons in the standard video feed view. So let's return to the dashboard. And from here, if you go down to the bottom, you see two other icons here in the app. Uh, the next icon over is gonna be the gallery icon. Any screenshots or videos that you've saved can be found here. At the top, there's a menu to filter these by photos, videos, or favorites. So you can mark individual photos or videos as favorites so that you can quickly return to those and see them later uh, if you've saved statistics on a specific group that you've shot or maybe you're doing load development and wanna save the uh, summary of information of the group sizes and statistics for those groups. If you go into a photo or video, at the bottom you'll see the option to share that file, favorite it, or delete it. If you share it, it's gonna bring up the default sharing menu for the phone or tablet that you're using. And so since we're on iOS right now, from here we can airdrop it, we can message it, we can save it to our files, um, and really do anything with this file now. And then returning back to the main gallery, the next icon over is gonna be the Academy. Right now, we're not connected to the internet because we're connected to the camera. The more advanced tutorials that we have are not gonna be available right now but the FAQs are always available. We've got guides for troubleshooting, uh, guides specifically related to the cameras and how to set them up, and detailed guides on how to use the app features. You can just tap on these and they'll expand with bullet points and text describing how to use each feature. If you are connected to the internet and you're at home on Wi-Fi uh, or on your cellular network, 
the hardware and features options in this menu will be available. Those will open up into uh, tutorial videos and more interactive guides on how to use the product and how to use the features. And that's it for the basic features of the Longshot app. Thank you.